So, now, I'm a third year aerospace engineering student at the University of Toronto. Uh, you can see in the middle photo there that I am purple. Um, so I couldn't dye my face purple to come here today, but I am wearing purple shoes. And it was very important that I wear purple today, um, but it is very hard to find an outfit that can match them. But hopefully that went okay. Um, now, for engineers, dyeing yourself purple is actually a sign of respect. So it is completely optional during the first week of classes, um, but a lot of people do do it. Now, to give you a quick example of kind of why it's important to us, the engineers are the ones that used to operate the engines or the boilers on the ships. Now, for them, it was really hot and sweaty work, and some of the time their headbands that were purple would bleed and dye their faces. So if the ship was sinking, they would be the ones that would have to stay and try and get all of the power they could so that the passengers could get safely into the lifeboats. And sometimes, the engineers didn't make it off of the ship. So for us, the color purple is a sign of respect. So this is me. I am a purple shoe-wearing aerospace engineering student at UOC. I was named one of Canada's top 20 under 20, and I gave a TEDx talk called Sciences for Everyone. But this is also me. And this is the me that should interest you today. Because eight years ago, I was sitting exactly where you are in this room. I was you just a few years ago. I came to the Durham Science Fair when I was in grade six, and seven, and eight, and 11. And I was on Team Canada in grades nine and 10. The most important science fair that I attended was the one in grade six. And that is the photo of me in the top left corner. If I had not come to the Durham Science Fair when I was in grade six, then everything that I have done since may not have happened. All of those photos and the places that I have traveled to and the friends that I have made may not have happened. And I likely would not be studying aerospace engineering at U of T. And that would really just be too bad. So the best decision that I made in science was to come to this fair in grade six. Now for some of you, this might be your first science fair. And if it is, welcome. You really did make a good decision to come here today. In grade six, my project was a little uh, wooden car with a magnet mounted on the back. When I put another magnet near the car, the magnets repelled and the car moved. That was it. It was so simple. And I won $100. I felt amazing. The judges and everyone that came and talked to me that day were just so generous. I felt like a rock star, and I was rich. I had $100. So for me, coming to the Durham Fair when I was in grade six was a good decision, and I couldn't wait to come back in grade seven. But I did have a problem. To come back to the fair, I needed the project. In elementary school, everyone knew that I was going to be a veterinarian for furry animals. They are just so cute. However, I just couldn't think of a project that was related to furry animals. How do you do a project on cute? I looked everywhere for an idea, but I couldn't find one. I was stuck. Then one day, when I wasn't looking for an idea, I found my first wind turbine. It was tall and beautiful, but it was also idle on a windy day. And that didn't make sense. This is a wind turbine. And it was a windy day. So why was it idle? That bothered me. And that's important. Find something that bothers you. That's what I did. I checked on Google and found that wind turbines will only cut in or start to turn to generate electricity in wind speeds that are around 14 kilonewtons per hour. But here's the problem. Most of the time, the winds are only half of that, around 7 kilonewtons. So this means that wind turbines will actually sit idle up to 80% of the time. And I thought that was ridiculous, so I decided to find out if I could change that. So now, looking back, I had a science fair idea. But at the time, that's not how I thought about it. I saw it as something that was wrong, that needed to be fixed. I designed new wind turbine blades to see if I could try and get them to turn in slower wind speeds. I wanted wind turbines to operate more than 20% of the time. 
If possible, I wanted them to operate all the time. The first blades that I designed are at the top there, and the next set are at the bottom. To test my blades, I built a generator, so kind of like a small wind turbine. And I used the bearings and computer bearings and magnets from a computer to make it turn more easily. I tested the blades in my garage on a very, very cold winter day. Uh, so just a quick background for people. Uh, most wingland on wings now are on the tip of the airfoil and they point up. So what I did was I moved the winglet to the back of the blades, so the trailing edge, and had them point straight down. Then I made pictures, so like this one, to help to show people what I was doing so that the judges could understand what I was testing. Then I came back to the Durham Science Fair when I was in grade 7. For me, that was a very good decision. And here's why. This is me in grade seven at the Durham Regional Science Fair with my project on how to make wind turbine blades actually turn on a windy day, like they're supposed to. I am holding one of my blade designs in my hand. A wind turbine is actually an airfoil, or a wind, like on an airplane. And in July of this year, eight years from the date of this photograph, I will be working at Airbus in England. So instead of working on my balsa wood wings that you see in this photo, I will be working on these wings and having more fun than I could have ever imagined eight years ago when I was sitting in this auditorium, just like you are today. Airbus is the number one commercial aircraft manufacturer in the world. This is the Airbus A350. The wings are actually not metal. They're not balsa wood either. They're actually a carbon fiber composite. So it's kind of like a snowboard. And that truly is revolutionary. And this is the Airbus A380. It can seat 863 passengers. You can see two rows of windows there. It's actually the world's first fully double-decker airliner. Now, the reason I'm telling you this today is very simple. For me, it all started here with my project in grade seven on wind turbine blades. In truth, my science in grade seven was pretty bad. Honestly, the biggest reason that I did science fairs was because I enjoyed it, especially competing here at the Durham Fair. It was fun, and I enjoyed it. And because I enjoyed it, I did well. At every science fair that I went to, I won something. And I did not win because I'm particularly smart. No, I'm not. Any one of you here today is probably smarter than I am. I only won because I was having fun Do, and doing science. And anything that is fun is very, very easy to do. I mean, think about it. If you weren't having fun, you wouldn't do it. And I did it for years because it is fun. Some of my friends on Team Canada went on to study at Caltech, MIT, Harvard, Stanford, and U of T. These friends all learned early that science is actually fun. And when it's fun, it is so easy. Some of the fun was travel, all expenses paid. So this is me in grade seven at Pearson Airport heading to Winnipeg. You can see I'm smiling, but I was so scared. And in grade nine in Los Angeles, just having fun with me. And this is with Team Canada, standing in the surf on the Santa Monica beach. Now, I was lucky enough to win a lot of awards because of the things that I did in science fair. So in grade eight, I was actually asked to be on a television show called Think Big. I received commendations from the Prime Minister and others, and received awards such as the Top 20, um, the Rotary Youth Leadership Award, and Leading Girls Building Ontario. So, I want you to know this. I did not set out to win these awards. No one ever does. I won these awards for one very simple reason. I was just having fun, doing science, and encouraging other young people, like each of you here today, to join me in the fun. Now, back to grade seven in Winnipeg, this is 
standing in front of my project, uh, you can see my balsa wood blade behind me on the table. Now, I was really scared. I had never been away from home before, and here I was in Winnipeg. I'm pretty sure I cried the entire week I was there. Um, my eyes were permanently red. But I wanted to be there. I wanted to experience it. And I had no idea that eight years later, I would be leaving home again and moving to England for a year to work on some of the best aircraft in the world. Going to England again, or going to England, I will be nervous again, like I was in Winnipeg. But I'm pretty sure there will be less tears this time. But I do really want to go. I want to experience it, and I can't wait. This is the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol, England, not too far from Airbus, and it is a World Heritage Site. And this is the Concord Roundabout. So they don't use stop signs in England, they use roundabouts. Um, the Airbus buildings are just to the right of this roundabout. Now, this roundabout was actually named after this airplane, the Concord, which was the world's first supersonic airliner that was built in Bristol. And each of these famous sites is just an hour away. So why am I telling you this? Why am I showing you these photos? This is stuff that I am doing. So why is it important to you? Well, I'm telling you this for two reasons. The first reason, I want you to know that for me, it all started here, at the Durham Regional Science Fair. Everything that has happened to me in science, especially aerospace engineering, happened, started with my yellow balsa wood wing that I brought here in grade 11. And this becomes even more important when you realize that I was in a performing arts program in high school, studying trumpet and dance. I did not major in science. So if I didn't come to this fair, I don't think I would be studying aerospace engineering or going to Airbus in July. The second reason is actually more important. The second reason is this. I want you to know that it can start for you today at the very with your own project. You can start your own it, whatever it is for you. But then, that raises an interesting question. When do you know that it is started? The cool thing for me was that in grade seven, I didn't know that anything was started. After all, I was going to be a veterinarian for Korean, not an aerospace engineer. All I knew was that I was having fun, and I wanted to keep having fun. And all I want you to do today is to have fun. It really is that simple. Then, come back next year for more fun. That's what I did. I just kept coming back. And that is how it starts. It starts when you start having fun. Now, I want to say something a bit about magic. For me, magic and STEM do go together. I took this photo on the airplane on my flight back from, from Airbus in England. We were cruising at 39,000 feet over the Atlantic Ocean, and it was minus 60 degrees Celsius outside. That's pretty incredible. This is the Boeing 777 and it weighs almost one million pounds, and it's flying. Now, I know the science of why that airplane was able to fly. I know Bernoulli and Quanda and Venturi and fluid dynamics. I take it all at school. But even though I know all of that stuff, it still feels like magic. Doesn't it seem like magic to you? Look at that photograph. How is that possible? That is one million pounds of airplane flying at 39,000 feet. For me, I love aerospace engineering. It is challenging, but I love that it seems to be 99% science and 1% pure magic. And it is that pure magic part that I love. Today, I want you to understand that there is actually magic everywhere in STEM, not just aerospace engineering. There is magic in science, technology, engineering, and even mathematics. 
So let's take a look at a very simple mathematics quiz thing. 1 plus 2 equals, well, I did say it was going to be simple, and it is. 1 plus 2 equals 3, right? Well, look, still easy. How many people knew that 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals 7 plus 8? Or this? Did you know that 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 is equal to 13 plus 14 plus 15? Or this? Well, let's look at this one. The numbers are bigger, but even a little kid could fill in those lines. A little kid may not know the mathematics, but they can see the magic. They can also see that it's simple and fun, even for a little kid. In STEM, it really helps to think like a little kid. You can see the magic more easily. That is why airplanes that weigh almost one million pounds are able to fly. Someone could see the magic and thought that it was possible. I want you to know that for me, the key to aerospace engineering in particular, or STEM in general, is simple. Just focus on having fun. If you want to find your magic, then just focus on having fun. I didn't know about magic when I came back to the science fair in grade eight. I was just having fun. And in grade nine with Team Canada, I didn't see any magic, but I still had a grade nine. I started to see the magic after a few years of simply having fun. And you will too. And parents, I want you to help your, your child to have fun. That's important. Now, in this photo, I was on Team Canada competing at the International Science and Engineering Fair in the USA. To compete, each student must submit a lot of documents to the USA and the government. If you didn't submit all of the documents, correctly, and on time, you didn't go. It was that strict. <coughs> now, some of the documents were not hard to fill in. So, for example, one was a photograph that they would use to make a photo ID badge that you would wear for the week. The security of the fair would check the badge, and if you didn't look like your picture, you didn't get it. So, a lot of these things were simple. And so, parents, I encourage you to help your kids. Kids, ask your parents for help on some of the simple stuff. That's what I did. I asked my dad to upload some of the simple documents, like my picture, so that they could make my ID badge. Well, this is the picture that was uploaded <laughs> to the fair in the international website to make my ID badge. Um, so obviously, my dad thinks that science can be fun for everyone. Now, if you keep science simple, it is actually pretty easy. You just have to focus on having fun. Don't stress the details. Just have fun. The rest truly is easy. Today, I really encourage each of you to walk around, talk with others, and most importantly, ask questions. I think this slide says it all. I want you to experience science for the fun of it. I really hope that each one of you here has a fantastic day.